Hey gang, how's everybody doing today? Uh, here we are. It's a beautiful day again in the great state of Pennsylvania. Our hair is a little bit longer. The sun is still coming out every day even if we can't see it. And God's word couldn't be any more true today than it was uh, yesterday. So let's take a minute pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. Lord, we thank you. Um, Lord, in the midst of just uh, chaos in the world, Lord, and fear, Lord, we stand uh, firm on your truth and your promises and your love for us. And Lord, we will not be shaken. Lord, we know that you are our defense, uh, Lord, and that you uh, care for your children. So, Lord, as we dig into your word, we look at this letter from Paul to the Philippians, Lord. Um, just minister to us as only you can, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I'm ready for a haircut. Um, been, I mean, I think we're going on week four or five now. We're losing track of it uh, from the Zoom meeting we had last week. I know a couple of you said you haven't left your house in about six weeks, um, and that's pretty crazy. Uh, who knew? But um, it's also pretty exciting. Mrs. Weber told me she went to deliver a package yesterday and driving around. She saw uh, lots of people out playing in their yards and taking walks, so there's some good things happening. And uh, I know I can speak for myself. Some people uh, have specifically that we wouldn't expect have, have asked, Lord, um, what does this mean and, and uh, who is Jesus and did people really see him, uh, how many people saw him, um, things like that, especially on Easter Sunday. So that was really exciting. I hope everybody had a great Easter. And uh, you uh, heard Chris, he, he did ask the question. Um, the Lord is, or he said, the Lord is risen. I hope you all shouted out, the Lord is risen indeed. And now we get to look at it. Uh, you remember last week um, Paul was talking in the beginning of Philippians chapter 2. We're going to be in chapter 2 uh, verses 5 through 11, but back up a little bit. And in the beginning of chapter 2, we see these gifts uh, that were given um, by uh, our relationship with Christ. And Paul says, and I change it to, since there is consolation in Christ, we have consoling through Christ Jesus. Um, since there is comfort of love, if with our faith and our love for Christ, we have comfort and love. And uh, we have fellowship with His Holy Spirit. And we have affection and we have mercy and we experience these things every day. And then he goes on to say, fulfill my joy by being like-minded. That's a hard one. Uh, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem others better than himself. Let each look out not only for his or her own interests, but also for the interests of others. And the challenge was to change a little bit and try not to take so much care of ourselves, which we're so good at, but to try to take care of some other people around us um, and to serve them. And so... As we get into chapter 5, we have this challenge to uh, not only look out for our own interests, but for the interests of others, um, and not to be selfish. And so the question is, how do we do that? How do we go about not being selfish? How do we go about looking out for the interests of others, um, putting them before um, ourselves in many ways and sometimes? And so Paul goes on to give us this answer in verse 5. He says, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant. So, that, there's a little bit of wordiness in there, and that can be confusing. And what do you mean, Jesus didn't consider it robbery? Uh, the idea is... Jesus had every right to not do what he did for us. He did not have to take the form of human flesh. He didn't have to put on this skin suit that we have and come and serve us here on earth and then die for us. At any moment he could have changed his mind, but the idea is he didn't consider it robbery, he considered it joy. He did it willingly and he did it for us and he didn't have to. And so how do, we, how do we go about and serve others? And so we have to have this humility that we get through and only through Christ Jesus. I liken it to this, guys, and you've heard me talk about children on my favorite age is seven and how they love their parents and um, they're not embarrassed and things like that. Um, 
I now uh, have raised four children, um, we, not I, my wife and I, and a lot of help from the Lord, and we now have grandchildren, and we are have gotten pretty good at making observations, and you can see and tell a lot about a person, um, and a lot about their parents without ever having met their parents. You can make some observations when you meet someone uh, about their upbringing. And even in our own home, our cho you know, we joke around and we'll say, oh, she really has got that, uh, that piece of you in her, or he has that attitude that you have. Sometimes it's good and sometimes it's bad. We always like to joke about the bad and we like to brag about the good. But the idea is those that were under submission, in other words, as a child, you have to submit to your parents. And that's a hard thing sometimes. But you start to, living under their roof and growing up under their rules, and, and guys, I'll tell you, sometimes this isn't a good thing, but many times it is. So if a family is trying to act in a way and raise their children in a biblical fashion, then they're going to make mistakes, but ultimately the heart is going to be there. And that, that, that is the heart of Jesus and the mind of Christ. And so as we look at these things and we think, and you maybe even look at your own examples, and <laughs> you'll say this, my children all said it to me, I'll never do that when I get older. And they've all come back and said, oh my gosh, mom, dad, I acted just like you. <laughs> and that's really fun, and it's exciting to see. And I, we always chuckled when they said they wouldn't, because we did the same thing, and we know they will. And I'm sure as you're listening to this, you're thinking, oh, this quality or this maybe not so much of a quality of a family member, parent, um, you'll choose not to take advantage of. But someday you'll, you'll catch yourself, and you'll hear the echo in the background and go, oh my goodness, I sound just like my mother, or I sound just like my father. And that's the idea here, guys, as we sit under Christ, as we sit under his teaching, under his love, and under his compassion, these things mentioned, these gifts uh, that were mentioned, the comfort of his love, the fellowship with his spirit, his affection, his mercy, and his encouragement, we start to develop um, and, and take on some of his attributes. Now, mind you, we do it in a way that, uh, in our sinful self, and sometimes we do it for good, and sometimes we do it for bad. Uh, our hope is that we would be doing it to please God. And so here we are, let this mind be in you, this mind that's in Christ. And it's really, it, it shows absolute and complete humility. Um, he relinqu he re Jesus relinquished his right to, the, to be king and to be ruler of the earth for our joy, for our salvation. And what an incredible thing that is. And so it goes on to say he humbled himself and becoming obedient. He had to become obedient to something that he was in charge of to the point of death. And thank God he did it for us. Even the death of the cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him, given him the name which is above every name. That is the name of Jesus. And at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of those on heaven and those on earth and those under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Well, I'm going to take you to a passage which should be real familiar because it's only been about a week and a half since we heard Chris uh, speak of it. Pastor Chris on Sunday morning, that is on Palm Sunday. And if you remember on Palm Sunday, Jesus is walking into Jerusalem and he's on the Mount of Olives. And there's this, if you've ever been there and seen pictures, there's a big valley down and a bunch of olive trees and groves and rocks. And it's really cool. And then you get to a, a small creek right now, which will be a river one day. And then you go up into the Temple Mount. And as Jesus is coming down that hill, we're going to read, going to read to you from Luke uh, 19, uh, starting in verse 39. I'm sorry, starting in verse 37. And as he now drawing near the descent of the Mount of Olives, and it's very steep. I've walked down that several times, and you have to, I mean, it's, you got to pay very close attention. Otherwise, you could fall over, and if you fall over, you're rolling until you hit something. And the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works they had seen, saying, 
Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees called out to him from the crowd. And they yelled, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. But he answered and he said to them, I tell you that if these should keep silent, that the stones would immediately cry out. Wow. What, a, what an image. What a picture. And that's the idea here. Every knee shall bow. And guys, I can tell you, I bow right now to Jesus Christ. I recognize Him as my Lord and Savior. And if you're listening to this and you're like, well, my parents believe and so I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to follow. Um, you can't take the mind of your parents because they have a love for Jesus. You have to own it yourself. And there's a point where whether you choose to now or you choose to later, you're going to confess that Jesus is Lord, and you're going to be bowing on your knee. And I think there's no better time than to agree to do it now, beforehand, and be ready for that event. Because it will be too late after. And so here they are. Every, every knee shall bow, those in heaven, those on earth, and those under the earth. I want to be in heaven when that happens. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord, to glory of God the Father. Having the mind of Christ. As you have and apply this, it's going to change how you look at things. So, for example, worry. Worry should be turned into trust. As you sit and you contemplate things and you look, man, I'm scared. And right now, we're in, a, we're in a world of worry. If you listen to the news, everybody's worried. What are they worried about? They're worried about dying. And... Frankly, I'd, I'm a little worried about dying too. I don't want to go through the process of dying, but I don't care where, uh, I know where I'm going. I don't care. Um, so as, this, as we're looking at these situations and we're thinking about uh, everything that's going on, worry can be changed into trust. So as we think about and worry, instead we should trust. And Paul did that. Paul and Timothy, when they were in that prison, they weren't worried. They trusted. They were singing hymns. And that's who he's talking to. He's even talking, one of the first people that might get this letter might be the prison guard, uh, the, the, uh, the jailer who got saved that night. Or this girl who was captive as a slave um, and, and, and being commanded by demons and overrun by demons. Uh, and wonder how much, how, how their lives from worry has changed to trust uh, because of their faith and taking on the mind of Christ. Uh, strife will become love. And he talks about that, the comfort of his love. Instead of striving, and I'm sure if I asked and put a poll out to some of the parents, I'm sure there's strife in some of the homes right now because everybody's ready to get out. But that becomes love. When we take and stop and pause for a moment, that strife should become love. Fear becomes faith. Instead of fear of what's going to happen, fear is, I don't know. It should be changed to, I know exactly, I know God's got me on this, and I know He loves me. So if you're listening to this, and you haven't made the decision to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, to have faith in Jesus, that He's got your back, that He's going to take care of you through all this, there's no better time. And guys, I know a lot of you that are listening have great parents that love the Lord, and they've taught you all the things, and you've been to all the Sunday school classes, but this isn't a Sunday school answer, this is an individual Thing. And as you contemplate this, these five verses and how powerful they are and how they say everything that is needed. It's very simple. It's the gospel and probably the shortest set of verses you could come up with. So let's read through again, then we'll close in prayer. And remember, he, he, he leaves us with, let each of you look out not only for his own interest, but the interests of others. And that we should um, not be... Uh, doing things through selfish ambition. And how do we do that? But we do that by letting this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but he made himself of no reputation. And that goes against everything in society right now. We want to be superstars. And Jesus has every right to be the ultimate superstar, and instead he took on the role he didn't go to the religious elite. He didn't go to the temple and say, Okay, priests, let's do this thing. He came to simple people like you and I, and then he chose to die for us. Taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men and women. 
and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and he became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, of those in heaven and of those on earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of our God and Father. Amen. So, take a minute. Are you ready to bow and submit and humble yourself to the, to, and have faith in Christ and own your own walk with Him? If you are, ask the Lord to forgive you. Ask Him to come into your life and ask Him to give you His mind and to give you these things. And I promise you, being selfless will be easier. It won't be the easiest thing you do, but it will be easier. So remember, we love you guys. We miss our assembling and uh, we're looking forward to our Zoom meeting. Remember, it's crazy hair night. So I want to see some crazy hair. I'm going to do something. I don't know what yet. Um, but uh, Mrs. Weber's nodding with a big grin mm -hmm. on her face. So I imagine we might need a big widescreen lens because her hair is going to get cr pretty crazy as well. Oh, she's pointing saying she's going to do my hair. Okay. Well, we'll have some fun with it tomorrow night and uh, or tonight whenever you watch this. And uh, again, we love you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father. We thank you, Lord. I, I can't imagine, Lord. Um, it's hard enough for us to, to, to take a point of such humility and lowliness. And yet you did it. You chose to do it for us and you didn't have to. And you didn't consider it. Um, you didn't complain about it. You didn't say, fine, whatever, I'll just do it. You did it, Lord. You did it with love. You did it with compassion. You did it with mercy. And you, did, and you chose to do it because you chose to love us, Lord. And so, Lord, we thank you. I pray for those listening, Lord, that they could understand what this means in their lives. And that they could change, Lord, as they apply the things, uh, Lord, that you have given us, Lord. That they could take worry and make it trust, Lord, through the lens of your life. What you've done for us, they could take strife and you could turn it into love for us. And take fear and turn it into absolute faith, Lord. So we love you, and we give you this time, and we praise your name, and it's in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.